I'll just do a couple more bars. Yeah, sure. I thought that was coming from you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> no, that's me playing it. Oh, you you were doing that yeah, in the yeah, room. Yeah. <laughs> I was just playing it. It's a that's why I like to have a click, see? It's a it's for years of fucking with programming, yeah. so yeah, I just yeah. put it in a way that's real like when somebody hits the nudge on accident right. between drums. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, you know, it's the first thing I heard. I was like, did I leave yeah. a, a plug-in on that shouldn't have been I, on bro, there? Bro, it's the funniest <laughs> thing, man. What's that? A little grit. Ugh. A little grit in the bottom. A little dirt. That one on, on, with the, yeah. With that's the, been in there. With the, with the, yeah. It's a little dirty, gross extension of the bottom. Yeah. I love that. Mm. Yep. So those have got to be in there. Yeah, that sounds. <laughs> right. That sounds like a lot, a lot going on, brother. That's crazy. <laughs> Like, that could go so many ways. So this is the side snare with the 308 on it. Okay. Woo! Woo! That damn near sound like an LM1 tuned down, Yeah, bro. right? It's a Prince record. Whoa! With the clap <laughs> stack, that's that's all day. Yeah. A Ooh. little I mean, I would take this. I'll just throw a plug in on it. And yeah. Yeah, of course. That's that's the L. That's a live recreation of an LM1, bro. Yeah. That is an LM1. That's what the vibe was for. But that right there. Let's see, where is it? There's 10. There you go. Jeez. <laughs> no, no, there's no triggers, guys. This um, is just straight, straight drums. Yeah. That's crazy, man. All right, I got a little more room to go on this guy, too. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Yeah.
met Dre in 93, man. You know, when he, right when he was going to leave Death Row, he was going to do an all-black heavy metal band. What? And I auditioned for it and got it, and then everything happened, and it kind of just went away. Yeah. And then a couple years later, he was doing SNL, and he remembered me, so he called me to go do SNL. And that was like 96, and in 98, we did it again, because he had released Chronic 2000. Uh-huh. And I'll never forget that one, because there was a guy that came to me, who was a guitar player in the SNL band, I said, man, I'm a huge fan of Dre, man. I'm, I'm starting to do production. My name is Lucas. We know him as Dr. Luke. <laughs> oh, wow, I didn't know he started there. That's yeah. crazy. But uh, that was fun. And then, you know, there was just a 10-year gap of just random sessions over nothing big. Yeah. And then in 2008, I had just did my boy Everlast album, and I was going to MD him and go on the road. And then Dre called me for some sessions and was like, yo, you know, what's your availability? And I was like, oh, you know, I'm here for a few weeks before I start traveling. And then it was kind of like the movies, like I tell the story a lot, but when the office like literally put the check down, you know, it was like, no, what's your schedule? That that vibe, you right. know? So then from that time, <laughs> 2008, I was there. Well, until, my schedule is now open. Right, <laughs> you know, it was just, I was there as a producer and, you know, started making records with him and was in the control room and yeah. I never left. There's a drum machine mentality. Yeah. So a lot of time, like Dre especially would love, to, he would love, like if there was a way to have total isolation with live drums yeah. that aren't electronic drums, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So he would love that. So a lot of gating and, you know, yeah. thing, because he really likes everything to be isolated, no yeah. matter how many times I say, bro, the whole <laughs> thing is the bleed. Like, yeah, that's part of the sound. <laughs> But for that, we really went in and did each part, you yeah. know. So that was fun, man. Well, that's... there's so much you can do when you do exactly. get that isolation. Exactly. You know? Like if you're doing like, okay, I'm not going to touch a cymbal. I'm just right. doing drums. Then yeah. I'll go back and overdub hi That's And I, just, I find you, myself you know? doing the cymbal part a lot from my remote clients. Yeah. So one guy who I do all his records, but he's in this format where like the smooth jazz format. Mm -hmm. And it's very like kind of, you know, very radio and very just you know, yeah. consistent, yeah. but because of the levels and the fidelity, I just do all the crashes, overdubs, yeah. and so he can lower it. That's all great. the rides yeah. I do with overdub, yeah, yeah. that I way that. they have it, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is kind of a, a bigger sound. I mean, I don't always use 13 racks. I've been into that lately, so it's a 13, a 16. Yeah. You know, and a 23, DW makes 23s, you know, instead of yeah. 24s. You can get a 24, but I've been using these 23s. And this guy here, you know, it's kind of an effect thing. You know, it's cool for, for certain stuff. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of snare sound yeah. coming from that. Yeah, you know. But uh, like Michael Jackson, you know. Yeah. Want to be starting something, you know. Right, but, um, right. you know, this is a great takeoff kind of basic sound that I could use for a lot of stuff. I could get away with it with a lot by changing hi-hats, rides, snare drum. I could get away with a lot of stuff on yeah. this, you know. Yeah. The Tom, you know, for certain things... It's, it's a little low, but it, if, if it's, you know, a whole bunch of different types of things, I can really get away with this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, if you notice, this is not that shallow. This is a 13 by 8. Yeah. You know, some people do 9. I tend, because this is in a bigger set, you know, which is like 10, 12, 13, this is a little bit more shallow because it had, there's a lot of drums with this kit. You know, yeah. that we're not seeing yeah. three, two other bass drums, another floor <laughs> tom. It's crazy. Right, you, you got know? the whole kit. Yeah, this is more of the, the toned down version. Yeah. But it was set up for a whole different type of sound, so everything was kind of higher. So I've kind of come in and lowered it yeah. today yeah. for a, a little bit fuller tone. Those are the drums I used for the Super Bowl were actually you heard. 
Oh, uh, okay. You know, but the recording was done, you know, at a rehearsal place, but they right. brought a rig in. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, then it was mixed somewhere, right. you know. Yeah. But, um, you know, they, they sound immaculate here, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little different level. Yeah. Like, well, so. I mean, we're in a, you know, a, a yeah. acoustically treated room. Yeah. And, you know. They sound, like, really Through great, it. you know. Yeah, it's of course. 80, 28. But, you know, <laughs> but, you know, you if you're not getting in there right, a lot of that, you know, a lot of the story is told. It needs to be told about it before you get here, too, though. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, those, right. you know, listen. I feel I'm big on like trying to shape the sound so then the yeah. drummer can hear that yeah. and play to it, you know? Right. So if, if, yeah. if, you know, I do a lot of like harmonic distortion, mm -hmm. and overdriving things. And mm -hmm. if you're not hearing that, you right. have no idea that like, oh, I can't hit this crash Man, as hard listen, as I'm hitting it. That is such an amazing thing because I wish you could impart that into every front of house guy. <laughs> I can't tell you how many front of house guys. What all you want is and you, I'm you telling don't like, them, a, like what we have. a Beta 91 inside your kit. Exactly, bro. And your like, ear. you know, like how we have the pedal boards, like how many ways do I need to explain? Like, this is like an instrument. That's my thing too, like we were talking earlier and I didn't mention this, like my, my real thing is like I love the authenticity part. So I only wanna bring authenticity to something. I don't wanna just say yes because right. I have to know that I could bring something right. to it and I'm not really gonna accept it if it's not my thing. Yeah. You know, right. and, and it, with anything, you know, I don't want it to sound like, I don't wanna play at something. I wanna try to give it right. the authenticity, you give know. Give it the authentic thing. As a session guy, I mean, you know, when that's my role, I mean, that's kind of what we're supposed to do mm -hmm. is satisfy the music, so. I'm not usually creating in a band setting, you know? Mm -hmm. So a band setting is kind of like equal footing and everybody kind of has a say. But, you know, when I am in my writing sessions, I have written, you know, from behind the drums, right? With other musicians in the room. Yeah. And, you know, in that situation, you have to just know it's a certain time thing. You have to know how to not try to like dominate everything and kind of let people have their time. Somebody has an idea, don't just start playing over it. Right. I do a lot of just support time while somebody's working out their thing, you know right, what I mean? Right. Yeah. You know, the more and more sessions that I work on, it, it's, it's just an all out collaboration. You that's know? the vibe, I love that word. Like for me, that's my thing, it's like I'm a collaborator. Yeah because I've had different roles in different situations and I don't mind, you know. Right. Thankfully the drums have, uh, early on have kind of got me in certain rooms and in certain situations and then from there, whatever happens is gonna happen. Yeah. But I like the collaborator concept a lot, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.
got it? Okay, cool. I saw you got like 40 yeah. snares out here. I just what, try are they, to, what do they bring to the table? You yeah, know? I just try to do reconnaissance on what, what it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like as much as I can about. What the vibe is. Yeah, and if there's certain people I know, certain producers I know that are really going right. to be on some less exhausted possibilities, yeah. I'll bring. I don't bring that to every session. I have yeah, smaller yeah. ones and right. different, you know. Stuff. I mean, I try to have some, at least two or three options. Right. That's my minimum. Always, but yeah. if it's something I don't know quite what's going on, I'm mm -hmm. gonna have them bring something like that. Yeah. You know, with the twenty in it. Um, you know, because this is I, I'm a few hundred, or close to a few hundred deep. Wow. You know, so um, if you were to put everything together, so um, you know, I just try to have. At one point, I had stuff in L.A., New York, and in Miami back in the early 2000s. Yeah. And then it was just L.A. and New York, and now mm -hmm. it's L.A. and Nashville. You know. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, man, um, it just, I'm just going to give some options, you know, and yeah. what I think it is. Like if I'm listening to somebody describe stuff, you know how there's references yeah, right. and everybody has their weird color or texture references, you know, yeah, yeah. then I'm going to try to synthesize that, you know, and capitulate right. that into something that into that's tangible. Drum. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, yep. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> you brought old Piccadilly Circus. You got a hole in the bottom. The miniature still, Piccadilly. Still works. <laughs> woo -hoo. There's a kit to this, too, man. Oh, no way. Yeah, dude, this dude, this is like, yeah, so it's, it's another mud. Look, no lug here. <laughs> a little hole that's been there for like yeah. 10 years. I don't even know if this snare stand will fit it. This was 90s, though, man. The popcorn was... Oh, yeah. No? Pop. Yeah, yeah, oh, you, you got it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs>